Hi cats and kittens, it's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent and I hope this finds you really well. For those of you who are new to the channel, this mostly focuses on all things perfume and fragrance related. And for those who, of you who are returning, thank you so much for being here. Today I thought I would talk briefly just about my experience both um, past and recent with the House of Caron. Um, I just recently got back from a trip to Paris, I am lucky to report. And one of my favorite parts of the trip was actually visiting the shop of Caron, which I have dreamt about um, for 20 plus years. Um, I read about Caron, I think in Vogue, yeah, like 20, 25 years ago, I want to say I saw an article and it was about the perfume industry and it showed a picture of a woman in front of one of the shops where they actually had perfume taps. So for those of you who aren't familiar, um, imagine, you know, like the taps that we use, uh, the glass ones to put iced tea or lemonade in in the summer. Um, if you're having a party, they kind of look like that. Um, and they are full of perfume. And anyway, the shop just looked beautiful. And it was one of those things that I kind of like, it really caught my attention because it was so visually alluring but I kind of stored it away in my mind as a dream that I thought I think would never happen. Um, then I got more and more deeply into perfume and before I left for this trip about 10 days ago, I hoped to go to Caron as one of the, um, one of my jaunts uh, during uh, my trip. And when I was in Paris, I uh, searched on the shop and it seemed like there wasn't one close to anywhere I mean, not within walking distance of where I was staying in Paris. And um, I had no idea that there was one just like um, a few hundred feet from Champs-Élysées. So I went to Champs-Élysées to go to Guerlain, which I'll talk about another day. Um, and don't you know, as I am traveling there on foot, I look up and there is a Caron shop, which I... It appeared to be new. Let me know if I if you have been there and I'm incorrect. But um, anyway, I immediately caught my attention and I just thought, oh my gosh, my luck. So I went in there and uh, was just astounded by the perfume experience. The customer service was a little snobby. Um, I will say my first trip to uh, that area was uh, in late 2018. And I actually had an amazing first experience at the Guerlain shop and was treated like a million bucks. Um, but it does seem like um, both of the experiences I had this time in perfume shops, um, the impression I got was as people walked in before and after me that were, it looked like they were tripping in money. I mean, it, insanely expensive handbags, et cetera. Um, the shopkeeper's attention definitely went to them um, more you know, whatever. So, but to be in the Caron, Caron shop was just an incredible dream. And um, I experienced some beautiful perfumes and took a couple things home, which I'm going to share with you. So first I should say my favorite scent of all times, which uh, sadly has been discontinued, is a Caron scent. And that was part of the reason that I wanted to explore the shop as well. So my favorite perfume is Caron's it might be hard to see the writing in the sunlight. Um, Eau de Reglisse, which is basically um, kind of like water or scent of um, licorice. But it is much more than that. It is really a, to me, a lemon verbena tea scent with a hint of licorice. It is especially beautiful in hot weather, but it can be a signature scent and was for mine for a short time. This is sadly discontinued. You can still find it online for 60 to $70. Well worth it. Tremendous scent. Um, really beautiful. So um, I didn't realize that I know that there are some Caron scents that have been in production for, uh, gosh, I think 100 years, but um, I didn't realize they had a relatively new in-house perfumer. Um, his name is, uh, Jean-Jacques, I believe, and he produced, I believe, all of the scents I'm going to share with you today. So I purchased two scents and then they gave me a sample of another scent that I'm going to share with you. Um, 
the first, so first I'll show you the presentation. Gosh, I should have brought up the bag. It's really beautiful too, but their, their signature color. So their shop is very, very kind of like, to me, it looks like really, really, and I mean this truly in the best of ways is not a diss. It's got this to me, 70s to 80s sensibility. Um, really cool kind of what was seen as modern at that time. And then there, it seems like there's a lot of white. It's kind of a bright white store. And that's why it reminds me of a 70s, 80s feel. And then their kind of highlight color is this kind of wine, almost aubergine kind of color. Um, these are what the boxes look like. They're really beautiful. Um, and uh, it says what the scent is on the side here. You open like so. The bottle is nestled in here. And then there's a little bit of a description about the line on the inside of the box. So the, the presentation is really tremendous. And um, on the side of the bottle is the name of the house, Carol. I'm not sure if you can see it. But really beautiful, almost like an amulet or like something that would be worn. Really gorgeous bottle that kind of opens like so. Um, the bottles tend to run at least right at the shop. I think they're 120 pounds, so about $130 for 30 milliliters. And then I think they have 50 milliliter and 100 milliliter offerings. And I want to say that goes up to like about 175 and then about 220 uh, US dollars uh, converted from euros. Um, so this is about $130 US dollars or about 110 to 120, I think, um, euros. Did I say pounds? Anyways, euros. So the first scent that I purchased that just caught my fancy immediately, and I, I tested probably 20 cents. One of the things that was interesting was immediately somebody approached me when I walked up and not kind of with the sweetest demeanor, but whatever. I find actually, so this is, P.S., I'll just say this is not about the French. I think the French are amazing and they are so gracious and uh, speak our language. And, you know, I, I do my best to speak a little of theirs, but all to say phenomenal host when you go to France. I, I think, anyways, French people are incredible, amazing, beautiful hosts. But just these shopkeepers were a little snobby. So I got kind of a quick look and I wasn't quite a, ready yet because I wanted to test some things and no one kind of approached me or told me how to test the sense. And then immediately other people that appeared to have a lot of money were in there. And so that's, that's where the attention went. So I kind of fumbled through some of what I thought were testers and I, I picked one of these up and sprayed it and I was, um, quickly scolded. <laughs> so I'll just say that because apparently it was not a tester bottle. Um, I learned and then I, I acted as I should have perhaps. Um, but the first scent that I fell in love with was, um, Narcisse Blanc. Um, and then the other scents I purchased or the other scent I purchased is Tabac Exquis. And then I'll talk about another scent. So, um, Narcisse Blanc essentially is, um, there are other notes, for instance, I think there's bergamot in here, but mostly what I get is all facets of the bitter orange plant. So the blossom, you know, orange blossom, um, the leaf and the stem, so you get a little petty grain. Or, yeah. And then Narcissus, which is just a scent. It's so funny because I, I bought another scent in Paris that I love that has, that's kind of Narcissus forward, but... I grew up with daffodils and narcissus around in the spring, um, and it's just a very unique scent. If you haven't experienced it, to me, it's kind of a combination of a soft floral, but also with this green element, but somehow not being screechy. I don't know. It just smells like the epitome of spring to me. So I love this. It dries down to be more powdery. Um, at first, you get the, the brightness of things like bergamot and the uh, petty grain. But when it dries down, it's on my wrist here, it gets a little more powdery and the Narcissus comes through a bit more. Um, I think it's a really beautiful, original, unique, gorgeous scent, a wonderful spring scent without being, without focusing too much on white florals that most people use or most perfumers use. Um, and uh, I just, I, I thought it was really, really unique 
um, and uh, just really a, a quality scent. I thought it was really, really gorgeous. So this is one of the first things that I went for. Um, I'll quickly say that the nose, Jean Jacques, um, I'm getting to know, but he apparently has been uh, making perfumes for, I think, 20 plus years. Um, he worked for another perfume com company. I can't remember the name of it. Started out, it sounds like he was a pianist, like a really, really um, strong pianist by the time he was 16 years old. And then he learned about... Um, the perfume world through a friend and then went into biochemistry and ended up working for a perfume company. He appears to be pretty young in spite of the fact that he's been doing this for 20 plus years. And he started as, looks like he started as um, Caron's house perfumer somewhere around 2018-19. So relatively recently. And then I noticed when I looked up the scent, by the way, on Frank Grantica, that it's listed, but there have been no narrative reviews yet. So that was kind of exciting to me, actually, that um, it was released, I think, in, did I say, I think in 18 or 19. Um, and uh, yeah, so really exciting to actually have a perfume that hasn't been really talked about much yet. And I think it's gorgeous and really unique, perfect for spring, but could be worn anytime. So that's kind of my experience with so far with Narcisse Blanc. Um, the next scent I purchased, I, I probably again tried about 20. I would say out of the 20 I tried, I would say about a third to maybe a half were scents that were older Caron scents that have either been reformulated or have just stood the test of time. Some of those were great, but it turns out that the two I purchased were actually on, were both new releases. And then the sample they gave me was a new release as well, pardon me, that I really love. So that's kind of cool that um, they're doing new things, but yet I, I feel like the new scents still felt like they had a thread to the old scents so that I could kind of feel like there was still a house DNA, DNA if that makes sense. Um, the second scent that I bought is, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Tabac Exqui. So exquisite tobacco. Um, it is beautiful. Um, this has a bit more of an ambery color and that kind of, I think, is reflective of how the scent smells or feels. Um, oh my goodness, this is... So if the first scent was a spring summer scent, this definitely feels more like a cold weather scent, but it's still light enough. I would wear it anytime and I wore it that day and loved it. And I have it on my, have it on my elbow here today. Um... While it is called a uh, tobacco ski, you do definitely get some tobacco. When I first spray this, what I mostly get though is amber. Um, I get, yeah, I get amber um, with a bit of tobacco. As it dries down, what comes out, much to my surprise, and I say that because I really love it and I tend not to love chocolate scents, cocoa chocolate, but really cocoa more comes out and tonka bean, which I do love. Um, and it's just so warm and it's like X ski is a perfect description for it. It is exquisite. It feels really rich, but all of these scents feel really expensive to me and just rich, good quality, deep, beautiful. Um, it's a gorgeous thing. And I think this was uh, just released a year or two ago. I, I did find a few narratives in for Grantica and it's rated really, really highly. I think at like 4.5 or something out of five um, in case that matters to you. It doesn't always matter to me. I like what I like, but um, this is really, really gorgeous and I think really easy to love. Um, and all of these scents. I mean, I'm a fan of you wear whatever you like, no matter where you're at on the gender spectrum. But I think any of these scents could be worn easily, no matter who you are and who it's mar marketed to. So Tabac Exqui is just a gorgeous thing and I'm so glad to have it. I meant to mention something that's kind of cool about these bottles is they're kind of stackable. So like the bigger bottles um, have a way that you can kind of stack the smaller ones on top and that you can even stack these two together, almost like, again, amulets or bracelets, really cool. A lot of design put into this, you can tell, a lot of thought, so really gorgeous. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is called 
Rose Crocon. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uh, if I'm learning French at all. <laughs> um, and that word basically means like crisp or fresh or even crunchy. And it's a perfect description. And I actually am surprised. I wish I would have purchased this. Uh, I, I might oh, online eventually. I'm going to take a hiatus for a while and spending after this trip. But this is a really, really unique rose scent. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I'll tell you why. So at least why I think so. Um, first of all, I'll say, I don't know if you can tell through this, but the juice is green and it shows itself as really green in the bottles in the store. So that was kind of beautiful. It looks like a jewel. Um, and the green kind of gives you a hint of what's going on. And it's not just that it's the leaves of the rose, which I thought that might be the case. When I first sprayed it, I sprayed it blind without looking. I, I like to do that before I look up any kind of notes or to get my first like original or true impression. And what I first got was, I definitely got like a fresh rose, but I got what I thought was grapefruit. I was 99% sure that it was grapefruit and or lime. Well, guess what? It's neither of those things. Instead, um, there is a strong cucumber note and there's a few other fresh kind of notes. I'm trying to remember what they are, um, that when it, when you first spray it, you get rose and this fresh thing that I thought was grapefruit, but in, it turns out it's it's uh, cucumber. When it dries down, it gets um, a little tiny bit more powdery, not highly powdery though, it just softens a bit. And um, it definitely presents itself more as cucumber. So rose and cucumber. And uh, it's surprisingly strong, which... Here, I have it on this elbow. And um, I've had this on for probably two or three hours today. And it's surprising to me that a cucumbery or a fresh scent could last this long and be this strong. It's really beautiful without being like headache inducing or too strong. Um, and it's really equally rose and then this kind of fresh um, thread of notes. So I think such an interesting, cool take on rose. I find rose hard to do. There's a million ways that it can smell to me outdated or it can smell too strong or boring. This is really interesting. And again, I think this is, I love it on my skin. And I, I tested it in the store and it didn't really catch my attention, but on my skin, it's a whole different thing. You know, so let that be a lesson to all of us, haha. <laughs> um, I forget sometimes that like, it really is important to test things on your skin. Um, and I love how it lasts. I love how it settles down on my skin. And then again, what it comes to mind is anybody could wear it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I think this could be so interesting on a man too. Just really beautiful. So that's my experience with Rose Crocon. So Loving this house, so excited to have experienced it and to keep experiencing it. Um, I hope to learn more about the house. I would love to hear from you. Have you ever worn Caron scents? Do you have a favorite? Um, have you been to either of the shops in, I think there's two or three in Paris. Um, yeah, and what other houses in Paris are you interested in? Um, thanks so much for listening and watching. I hope you're all well, and I hope to hear from you soon. Cheers, bye.